everyone, my name is Ritu Gill, also known as OSINT Techniques on Twitter. For OSINT Gary's 10 minute tips, I'll be going over five tips when using Google Maps for OSINT research or investigations. Using Google Maps, you may need to verify a location or to understand what's around it or in the area. To find photos of a house, apartment building, or business, street and satellite views can be extremely helpful to investigators. This can be used for surveillance purposes, to see different angles and to see what's around the address, like other properties, identify alleyways, hidden driveways, etc. For rural areas where street view isn't available, you can use satellite view to view property lines, find out the neighboring properties, the proximity to other properties, and for awareness of exit points. So getting right into it, we cover the different views when in Google Maps. Street view, satellite, 3D map, and sometimes indoor maps. I'll now walk you through where to find all of these views. Starting with the search bar here, you can enter an address here, business name, or even GPS coordinates. So we're gonna start with Rogers Arena in Vancouver. And you'll see, we can find out if this location has street view. And how to do that is you click on the orange pegman on the right bottom right, and the blue lines light up, that indicates there's street view in that location. So if I click on that, it takes me to street view. The, this is street view. If I go back and I wanna see satellite, I can click on satellite on the bottom left here, and that's my satellite view. From satellite, you can click on the globe on the right, that takes you to 3D view, and you can go back and go back to 2D. Um, if I go back to the other map here, what you can see is a couple of things. If I zoom into the stadium here, I might want to know, okay, how do I see floor plans of a location? Um, some locations will have an indoor map. So these are places like airports, malls, stadiums, transit. So I search a location, I zoom in on the right hand side, you'll see levels and floors. And you'll see in this case, I, I, they're listed here. If I click on five, it tells you where in the arena they're being identified and so on. How do you see inside buildings? Again, you search a location on the left hand side. So in this case, we have Rogers Arena. I'm going to scroll down to photos and find where it says I, you have an option of all, but I'm looking for 360 view. And that will give me a view of inside that stadium. And you'll see other ones that have been uploaded. And those are photos that I may also be interested in. So that's where you would go. So going back to the search bar, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to delete that. I want to mention a neat Google Chrome extension called Instant Data Scraper. So if, for example, I was looking for lawyers near Vancouver, BC. It gives me a list here. So the way this is extension works is it's with, with sites where there's data to display displayed in a table format. If you're searching, for instance, the lawyers near Vancouver, BC, I already have this one downloaded, the instant data scraper. You can click on that and you can quickly use this extension to download the data and export to a CSV or XLSX file format. And you'll see, I can click here, and then I have this list that I might be interested in. So that's just a quick tip to throw in there for you guys as well. So getting into the next tip here, I wanna mention historical imagery via street view. So again, that yellow pegman that I mentioned before. So again, I go to Rogers Arena and I click on the orange pegman and I go to street view here. I'm just gonna click on a random spot and that's uh, this is what it is. So historical imagery to see at that street level, what you might want to see something from the past, you have to click on the time uh, slash clock, uh, which is on the top left here. And this indicates that there might be historical imagery here that we might be interested in. When I click on that, it gives me dates. So you'll see April 2009 was the first time. And 
this could be quite helpful. Um, why, you know, you might ask, why would you use this? You might need more information about a business front. Um, maybe additional information located on a signboard outside that business, or you may need to verify the business previously operating from that location. So that's where this could be helpful. Um, one caveat is historical imagery might not be available for every place, and it depends if Google has already been there. Of course, some locations may be inaccessible, so you will not find those locations. But again, from there, this is where I would go, and I would click here, and it tells you, it tells you in April 2009, this is what that location looked like, and you can scroll through, and every dot here gives you a different date. So you can see how things have progressed, and, and so on. So another tip I want to mention is measuring distance between two places. So if I go back here and I'm interested in, say, this location here to uh, this location, you can right click, you can say measure distance, you can tab it here, you can scroll and you can actually drag, let go and you can connect as many dots as you want. You can make it into a shape. You can see the distance in miles and kilometers. Um, you'll notice here on the bottom. You would use this if you needed to know the distance between two or more points when wanting to know the distance between targets, residents, businesses, etc. So I'm going to key out of that. Another thing you can do is if you're in a location and you want to know the exact GPS uh, coordinates, you, what you would do is you would right click and you would say what's here. So this feature allows you to find the GPS coordinates of a location. So that could be helpful and you'll see on the bottom here, these are the GPS coordinates. You can copy that information if you need it and take it somewhere else. And then we also have another tip that's called Photosphere. So when you click on the orange pegman, you'll see it says photosphere and then you'll get blue dots. The blue dots, these are photos that are panoramic. When clicking on a blue dot, I'm going to click on a random one here. Okay, and you'll see there's going to be a user here at the top. I want to find one with someone's photo. So let's click on this one. This one was taken by Google, so not that one. So we have this photo here. We have a user here. Sometimes you might want to expand that photo, especially if you want to get a closer look at the uploader. How can you do this? I'm going to click on the user. What I do here is I do a little bit of URL manipulation. What you can do is open image in new tab. And if this photo is extremely small, I go to the URL. I take out a couple of numbers. I'm going to add, say, 600 instead of the 120 they have there for the width and height. And now I have a larger photo. From here, you can search Google for image and you're doing a reverse image uh, search here. So you can see how you can take this further to see maybe this photo is used somewhere else online. You can also check all the reviews that person has made. Is there anything of interest? Okay, where they've been, that type of thing. So you can definitely take this further and see what the users reviewed, knowing where they frequent, especially if it's a specific, um, specific to an area, might be able to establish where they reside, depending on the area of the businesses they most, mostly review. So those are the five tips. To summarize what we covered, we talked about the different views, which are street view, satellite, 3D maps, indoor maps. Uh, we talked about Google Chrome extension, instant data scrap, scraper. We talked about historical imagery by a street view. We talked about measuring distance between two places. Um, another tip we gave was the what's here feature that allows you to find the GPS coordinates of a location. And we talked about the photosphere, the blue dots that these photos, uh, the photos that are panoramic. 
So I hope you learned a thing or two. That's it for now. Thank you and stay OSINT curious.